In round five, Quinn's perfect start is shattered by the Sharks. Absolutely nothing can stop Leicester Tigers, and there's a very naughty water carrier in Coventry. All this and more in this week's episode of Gallagher Premiership Rugby's The Lowdown. Roll VT. Welcome back to Gallagher Premiership Rugby's The Lowdown. You know the drill by now. I talk over and talk about and give opinions on some of the biggest happenings of this weekend in the Gallagher Premiership. You sit at home, absorb it all, agree with everything I say, leave positive comments, and then we all get on with our lives. Right, before we get into the rugby, Bath had a weekend off last week, so I want to know what they did. We miss them, right, when they're away, these players. I want to know what they do on their weekends off. Jacques Dutoy went go-karting. Uh, not a very original activity for a professional sportsman to do in their time off. It's go-karting or temping bowling, isn't it? Anyway, he didn't win, which is a real shame. It's a real shame. Uh, Josh Bayliss appears to have gone mountain climbing, gone up a mountain or just a hill. He's gone up a hill in Switzerland. He's gone to Switzerland to climb a hill. So good on him. And in other news, World Rugby have now legitimised and allowed the wearing of leggings or tights at all levels from now. Yet, I don't know if anyone wore them this weekend. Don't think they did. I want to know who you think is going to be the first person to wear them in the Gallagher Premiership. We've all worn them in training, we've all worn them at home, uh, right? We've all worn them on nights out, of course we have. Who's going to be the first person to wear them in action? Get in the comments and let me know. Right, on to the rugby, the reason we're here. Lots of people talking about Rafi Quirk, um, and of course he had a very good night on Friday night. That's four pass, I reckon that, isn't it? If it's not, it's pretty close to it. Cobus Visa, I thought, actually played every bit as well as Rafi Quirk, but Rafi Quirk does things more visibly. Frankly, most scrum halves would have scored that but he does have a habit of being in the right place at the right time, despite, despite only having been playing at this level for about 15 minutes. Looks a wonderful player, one of many wonderful scrum halves in the Gallagher Premiership at the moment. Who'd want to choose an England one? I wouldn't. What a line from Tyrone Green. Makes Sales defence, such aggressive defence. Looked all over the place when he cut that line. That little push from Caden Murley, really like that, because Denny Solomona, I know he's a good finisher, we all know that, but he doesn't off track back hard in defence goes really hard and hits hard when he gets there. He turns really well, Solomon. Look, he's getting there. I honestly reckon it's 50-50 whether Tyrone Green scores that or not without that shove. I think it was really, really important. Just watch it from this angle there. Caden Murley gives his mate a good dig in the back, gives him a little turbo booster and gets him over. Really, really nice. How good has Tyrone Green been at fullback since Mike Brown got suspended at the end of last season and then left for Newcastle? Fantastic. And this, Rafi Quirk, his acceleration is ridiculous. He's really, really powerful. That's what I think, that's the thing I think he shares with Faf de Klerk the most. Not a big bloke, but physically really, really powerful and explosive. And I think it shocks players. Never a double movement, he extends. His upper body, his shoulders do not move forward at all when his leg kicks out. His body does not get propelled forward. That is an extension. Absolutely fair try. Really, really good win for South Sharks, that. Right, the socials after that game, uh, Jess Hayden said on Twitter, exciting Friday night rugby is just the best thing. I agree with that. They're my favourite games of Friday night lights. And wasn't that genuinely exciting? Rafi Quirk is lit. Yes, he is lit. He is legit lit. Dave Rogers, uh, Big Dave, one of the best commentators in the game. Sale Sharks, good. Quinn's good. Prem Rugby, good. Tyrone Green, really good. Rafi Quirk, obscenely good. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to speak too soon about Rafi Quirk because it's early days. It's not quite his first season, but he's just sort of bursting onto the scene. He's very young. Um, we don't want to put too much pressure on him, but I think he potentially is the next England captain, Lions captain, Prime Minister. How about that? I mean, maybe not that far, but he's very good, isn't he? Right, uh, we're off to Kolf, uh, because the Wasps are playing the Chiefs. It's always going to be a tight game um, up in Coventry. This really surprised me. Cordero, I felt like Marcus Watson, he's super rapid. I felt like he gave him too much space and just underestimated Cordero's space. I think he thought he's got quick feet and good acceleration, but his top end isn't quite there. Turns out his top end is there. He did kind of have a head start, but still great wheels. Again on the outside, very nearly, very nearly a wonderful finish, but look how quick Marcus Watson is. Flat out beats Cordero for pace, hammers him for pace, catches him up, overtakes him, saves the try. So a version of redemption. I think he sort of put that ball down with his right cheekbone but they all count, don't they? Uh, guess what? Sam Simmons is a joke. His, his acceleration is a joke. His power in contact and low center of gravity are a joke. Uh, very, very difficult guy to play against. This was just brutal. One-handed pickup, slam, straight over the top. 
Jimmy Gopworth, tough old boy, tough old rooster, but he ain't doing nothing about that. I don't think there are many fly-offs this side of Johnny Wilkinson that would have stopped that. I know Jimmy Gopworth was playing centre, but he'll always be a fly-off for me. He'll always be a player. Um, now this is when it got a little bit naughty, didn't it? it? Kicked off a little bit. One water carrier sent to the bin, rightly so. The thing is, everyone's been complaining since that Lions South Africa series about water carriers being on the pitch. At least he wasn't on the pitch. He was off it. So on the socials after that game, the Chiefs official account said, death, taxes, and Sam Simmons tries. Yeah, quite right. The three things in life upon which you can rely. Uh, for Ruck's sake, said one of the best all-round performances I've seen from Sam Simmons. It's a simple one for Eddie. You've got Don Brandt or Simmons to start with one coming off the bench. Couldn't be easier. Yeah, until you remember that one of them has got to start. One of them's got to be told he's not starting. Then remember Billy Vunapola, Callum Chick, Tom Willis. How's Zach Mercer getting on? Um, over in France, yeah, not easy picking an England number eight at the moment. Tom Curry's gone all right, hasn't he, in the past as well. BT Sport tweeted this. Ball kicked away, tick. Brawl, tick. Water carrier sent off, tick. Yep, this actually just happened, and it did. And on that, on the water carrier thing, it's never a real brawl anymore, which is good news for the game and all that and its spectators, because no one actually hits anyone because you get caught and told off and get in a lot of trouble and banned and all that. So normally it's a bit of pushing and shoving, the odd little wedgie, and generally it's mates just having a grapple. I think if you're a water carrier, don't touch the ball, get out of the way. For me, and I know we wanna, you know, we wanna do what's right here, and we wanna be gentlemanly and polite about it and all that, I think it is the water carrier's fault and he should get out of the way and let the big boys play the rugby. The ball is not his, that is not his job to get in the way and delay anybody. So I think it was his fault and I think it was right that Wayne Barnes binned him. So there, uh, right, over to six ways uh, where Worcester had to try and stop um, an almighty start from the Leicester Tigers. Now at the moment, you know what you're going to get from Leicester Tigers. If you run straight at them, you're going to get battered. Carl Hatherall has been carrying really, really well for Worcester Warriors the start of this season, but how about that for a set of lads to run into? That South African back row was meaty and aggressive. George Ford, by the way, I thought was wonderful this weekend, but this guy, Nemanja Ndolo, really took over the game causes massive problems, and he's not just big, he's not just quick, he's clever, he knows when to have an impact, he knows when to get rid of the ball, he's a bright player, he's not just a specimen. And bear in mind, these are elite professional defenders, these are the best defenders in the sport. They know exactly what's coming, the analysis is exhaustive, and they still just can't do anything about him. He gives people absolute nightmares, and I tell you what, when he offloads like that, the defender's absolutely thrilled he's offloaded, because if he doesn't, You've got to tackle him. And this guy, Dolly, just can't stop scoring. He's like Ronaldo. I mean, he doesn't look anything like Ronaldo. He couldn't look a lot less like Ronaldo, actually. Freddie Burns, I think we'll call that a flat pass. Um, and nobody deserved, nobody deserved a try of his own more than this guy. Skidding in, untouched, lots of pace, taking a breather on the knee. Why not, big fella? What a game. And this little touch of magic. Marcus Smith, whatever you can do, I can do. If not better, well, kind of as well. Lovely touch from Freddie Burns, back from Japan. Always been a classy player. Good game from Freddie off the bench. Now, before we go onto the socials, and we will do that in a sec, there's just one little extra clip that wasn't in that edit then that I wanted to show you from the game. Just a little thing that George Ford did that I thought was absolute class. I'll show you now. I just want you to look for Perry Humphreys trying to defend around George Ford. Look at him there. He's got a decision to make, tries to get a hand on both players, doesn't know which way to go, gets planted by George Ford. Just that little delay, a couple of steps, gives him absolutely no chance. It's simple, but it's class from George Ford. Right, socials after that. Paul Williams said, genuinely, genuinely don't think I could take down the dolo. No, I've met you, Paul. You definitely couldn't take him down. That's not, that's not a debate, mate. Without a sizable piece of thick netting or fire, I reckon a trank gun. That's what I've always thought. I watched him and thought, trank gun, get him early. He'll be woozy before he gets to the line. That'd be, that'd be the idea. Uh, and Andrew McKenna, Macca says, at what point do we start talking about Leicester Tigers as possible Premiership Rugby winners, semi-finalists or winners? I think we already are. I think we were a couple of weeks ago, Macca. I don't think anyone doubts they could be a top four team at all. I think there's, there's every chance they might even make themselves favourites if they keep on winning these next few rounds. Um, but Sarries might have something to say about that as they went down to the wreck this week. And I think you might know what happened at the wreck. If you do, this is a big one. If you don't, trust me, it's a big one. And would you believe it? Um, the oceans parted for Super Mario Toji. Of course they did. Steaming in unopposed. Five and a half minutes back into Premiership action. Life's just going well, isn't it? He's mucking around with Jay-Z, scoring tries, five minutes back in. And the signs weren't good at this point, five minutes in. 
Um, it looked like it might get ugly. When you see Billy Vunapola putting in kicks like this, you know he's relaxed, you know he's confident. That's the best 50-22 we've seen so far, I reckon. Um, really, really classy. And by the way, he was outstanding. And this was around the time it started to go really, really wrong uh, for Bath. I'm not quite sure where Cipriani was chucking that, but this... This loss for Bath was not solely on the shoulders of Danny Cipriani. He's been out injured for a bit. He had no impact on the game, but frankly, not really any of the Bath team did. It got uglier and uglier and uglier. And you thought the second half, yes, Bath were better in the second half. Sarries weren't quite as sharp, but they were 40 odd up at half time. And it was an utter humiliation for Bath. With a squad with that many good players in it, to get it this badly wrong, to be crushed so badly at home, 71 points. I am not quite sure where they go from here. A brutal display by Saracens, awful from Bath. On the socials, Paul said, um, if I was part of the Bath coaching setup, I'd almost want Saracens to break the 80 point barrier because 80 points is the amount at which you can really start shouting and lobbing furniture around. I reckon conceding over 70 points at home, I reckon the odd stool might have got lobbed. That's what I reckon. I don't think you need to break 80 for that. Cy Boltz wonders if Sarri's time in the championship and the players getting a rest and all that, has actually made them a better team with a good few players getting a long rest period. Yeah, whatever it is, they look pretty decent, don't they? Um, I think that was as brutal as it's ever been for Bath. That's as bad as it gets because everyone's got the odd injury or two. I know that, but that is a pretty gun team they've got there. That team should not be conceding 30 points regularly, let alone 70. It went badly, badly wrong, but Saracens were just superb start to finish, so competent everywhere. I reckon they're favourites for the title now and a lot of people for obvious reasons ain't going to like it if they win but I reckon there's a very good chance they're going to win. Right up to Brentford to the community stadium. Odd name for a stadium but I quite like it. Is the best stadium in the league I reckon. I maintain that. When it's full it's going to be the best. Anyway Irish took on Gloucester. Irish really dominated most of the first half. Paddy Jackson uh, putting on his dancing shoes to pave the way their first try of the game. Look at those magic feet. I am not saying river dance. You are saying river dance. Not me. You. Agustin Creevy, class player. Been really, really good to start the season. Scoring tries and all that stuff. But this, just the handoff I like, the fend. Sends Adam Hastings flying back down the M4 towards Gloss. Love that. Absolutely ridiculous power. And despite not really having the ball for most of the game uh, or posing much of a threat, Gloucester found a way back into it for Lewis Rees Samet, who really we hadn't seen much until this point. Ran half a length of West London to put the guests in the lead. Um, when he gets a gap, he takes it. That's kind of the point with these guys. Same with Ollie Hastel Collins. Uh, another double barreled surname wing on out wide. Uh, trademark twinkle toes, darting down the left wing and ultimately paving the way for Irish's final try. These wingers, eh? they can just not touch the ball for 79 and a half minutes, yet do something magic in the 30 seconds where they do have the ball in their hands. And that's all we talk about. I'm actually quite resentful, to be honest. And after that game, Gloucester fan, uh, Jimbo G1425, catchy handle chief. Don't know why I haven't got more followers, to be honest with you. He said, lads, well done to stick in there under all that pressure in the first half. Rolling Maul, a real weapon this season, not a bad result. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And it does pay to have a decent Maul. It really, really does. And it's more than just a lot of blokes pushing. It's technique, it's technical, maybe. That's what they like to tell you anyway. Uh, ben Coles, of course, the, our learned friend, our right honourable colleague, journalist. Uh, it's getting comical, he says, that London Irish haven't won in the Premiership since March. I don't know if anyone in or around Brentford or London Irish is finding it too funny, Ben, but yeah, I see what you mean. They kind of can't win. They love to draw. They love to find ways not to win games. Right, up to the North East now. Newcastle against Bristol Bears. So watch out for Harry Randall. He is super sharp. Absolutely love this. Super, super sharp from Harry Randall. So much pace, so much invention and confidence. I love it, damage is done. But have a look at Adam Radwan's pace to get across there. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's like he's in a computer game on fast forward. I know Harry Randall's a thing we're celebrating here, but that pace to get across there, that was almost try saving tackle of the season. It was wonderful stuff. Now, Jamie Blamai, the reserve hooker, came on and made a couple of really key interventions. These turnovers, really, really good technique. Bristol Bears just a split second late to that breakdown and it's turnover time. And then Bristol Bears get March 10 for back chat. I like that. I like that a lot from Christoph Ridley. Good man. Obviously, I had loads of chat when I was playing, but I'm allowed to be smug now because I'm retired. There's a little bit of the Malcolm Marks about Jamie Lebermeyer. Really like watching him play. Really strong young player. The only problem is he's at the same club as George McGuigan, who is one of the best hookers in the league. So he ain't gonna have it all his own way. 
This was later on, another brilliant turnover, key intervention, late on, helped Newcastle Falcons dig out a really significant win against the Bristol Bears team who, let's be honest, are struggling quite badly at the moment. Right on the socials, uh, Mark B said, what next for Pat and his team? We're plumbing the depths at the moment and I can't see us getting any other results the way we're playing. I just think, well, yeah, things aren't going well. You're not finding ways to win, but you just don't suddenly become a bad team. You can lose four, you know. Exeter Chiefs, I think, lost six of their first eight games a season or two ago and won the Premiership, won the title. So it can just happen. Once you click, it's a long old season, mind. Plenty of points to play for yet. And remember, you've only got to be in the top four. You haven't got to come first. Benjamin Sutton says, this is another one I'm going to have to watch. Maybe it's time to hit panic on Bristol. Don't agree with you there, Chief. But also, Dean Richards doing a wonderful job with arguably the least talent in the league. Now, that could be insulting if you play for Newcastle Falcons. I don't necessarily agree with you on that. I think talent is helpful, but actually it's not really about the players you've got. It's not about having superstars. It's about what you get out of them, how much you get out of the guys you've got. I think that's where it's at. Um, that's it for me. So, right. YouTube comments, this is the bit that I don't like uh, particularly, but I basically have to do it because you like it. Apparently this is the bit you'll like the most. The Magpie says, can't wait to see if Marcus Smith can hang with the big boys on the international stage. Bowden Barrett made the step up a few years back and dominated, so why not? Yeah, why not exactly? Would absolutely love to see him play. Um, the old Plank Woodwork said, if Smith and Dombrandt don't get some serious time for England this autumn, I'll start a GoFundMe account for Eddie's tickets home. Um, Quite aggressive. Anyway, I think they will. I'd be really surprised if both of those guys aren't playing for England quite a lot this autumn. And Raw Dog 15 said, love your work, Flats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, particularly enjoyed the response here to that tired, dusty, and ultimately wrong expression, defence wins championships. I love seeing a cliche pulled apart. Magnificent. Yeah, I agree with that. There's this funny old thing around sport. Well, politics, everything, life. There are certain things that people have heard so many times they just roll them out. What we are seeing at the moment is that attack with winning games. Attack, attack, attack. And it's not just Quinns. It's not just Quinns. South Sharks might argue it. You know, they're defending pretty hard at the moment. But Rafi Quirk, the, attack, the attacking game, he's pulling out the bag at the moment. Absolutely fantastic to watch. And Saracen's attack at the wreck Sunday afternoon was, I mean, well, 71 points, right? So that's another round done and dusted. Remember to head over to Prem Rugby's website uh, where you get all the full match replays, all the highlights packages. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the little notification reminder bell thingy. Because um, if you don't, then it might get canceled. And what am I going to do then? What, what actually am I going to do?